Welcome. In this video we'll learn about lists. List is collection of objects. In Python, list can also store objects of different data types also. We use square brackets to define a list. Inside a list, objects are separate by commas. In this example, we first store our list, consisting of string in variable A. Next we store another list, which consists of integers and float in variable B. In next line, we make another list, having list as individual elements, and store it in C. Then we print these three lists. In first two line of output, list A and B is printed. In third line, list of list A and B is printed. You can see individual elements inside the list is also a list. Len is a built-in function, similar to print, which is used to find length of any sequence. We can use len function to find length of list, tuple, and string. It takes single object as parameter. Now we will find length of three list, a, b, b, and c, which we defined in previous example, using len. Length of both the lists stored in a and b is 3. Length of lists stored in c is 2, because, there are two list objects in that the list. Now, we'll learn about indexing in list. Indexing in list start from 0, that means first element in list will have index 0, second element will have index 1 and so on. Python also have negative indexing, which is in reverse direction. Last element will have index minus 1, second last element will have index minus 2 and so on. We can use square brackets to access single elements using index from the list. In this example, first we define a list consisting of string and integers, and store it in variable named ls. Then we print first, last, second, and second last element from the link. In output we get, a, d, c, and 2 which is first, last, second, and second last element from the list. In Python slicing is used to select subsequence. In slicing we pass start and end index of the substring. Here start is inclusive and end is exclusive. We can also pass step parameter, to decide how many elements to skip between selection. For slicing, you need to pass end, start and step values in square bracket, separate by colon. In this example, we'll store a list of integers in variable named lst. Then print slices of this elements. First we select elements form index 2 to 9, by passing start and end value as 2 and 10 respectively. Then we select all the elements on right side, starting from index 2. We can do this by skipping end value. Then we select all the element on left side of index 2. We'll do that by just passing end parameter. Notice the position of colon in second and last print statements. In first line of output, 8 element list is printed. Then in second line, 10 element list is printed. In last line only 2 element list is printed, as we only have 2 elements before index 2. Slicing in Python is forgiving, that means, if any index value passed is out of range, error won't occur. But, Selecting single element is not forgiving, if index passed is out of range, error will occur. In this example, first we slice the list, which we previously used in last example, from 20, but, 20 is not in range. Then, in second line, we select single element by passing value 20. Notice, error will not occur during slicing, just empty list is printed. But error will occur if we try to access single element present at index 20. This is really helpful function in Python. We use map function as we want to do some operation, or apply some function on every element in a sequence. In map function, we need to pass two parameter, first parameter takes some callable object, it can be function name, and next parameter should be some iterable. Our callable object or function should take one parameter, and return some object after operation is performed. Map function will return map object. Similar to object returned from range function, we need to iterate over this object to access its element. We do this by passing it in list function. In this example, we have a list of string objects stored in variable names list. 
we need to perform operation of adding hello prefix to each string element present in the list. First, we'll define a function, which takes single string and return the same string by adding prefix hello. Then, we use map function to apply our custom function on each element in the list LIS. We save object returned from the map function in variable named OB. Then, we pass this object in list function and print the elements. In output we get a list, consisting of same string elements in list LIS, but, prefix hello is added to each element of the list. In this example, we'll convert data types of elements present in list, numbers, from string to integers. We use int function to convert string to integer. We'll take our function and list, pass it in map function. Then pass the object returned in list function, and print that list. Notice in map function, we don't use parenthesis, we just pass function name. We don't call that function. Notice, the single quotes around digits is absent, that means our elements have data types of integer. These are some really important list class methods. First is append method, which is used to append single object to the list. Then comes, clear, it is used to clear all the objects present in the list. Next is copy, it performs shallow copy of the list. Then count, which is used to count number of occurrence of any object in the list. Extend method is used to extend list by appending element from iterable. We'll see difference between extend and append in a moment. Then comes index, we use this method to find first index of the object passed. Next is insert, it adds element at particular index. Then comes pop, this method is used to remove the element and return the removed object. Then remove, this method is used to remove first occurrence of any element in the list. Reverse method is used to perform in place reversal of the list. Sort method is used to sort the list in ascending or descending order, or by some key. In this example, we'll perform list sorting. First, we'll store list consisting of numbers in variable, LIS. Then we'll sort the list and print it. Then we'll perform sorting, considering one's digit only. We'll use key parameter in sort method. We'll define a custom function using lambda, which takes single number and selects its ones digit. We then call the sort method on same list, by passing key parameter value as the custom function that we defined using lambda. Then we print the list again. Notice, in first line, list printed is normally sorted. Then, the list printed in next line is sorted by their ones digits. In this example, we have a list consisting of integers stored in variable ls. Then we add integer 34 at the end of the list using append method. Next, we use append method to add another list, with 3 e integers, to our original list. Then we use extend method and pass same list. We also print intermediate results between each step. In output, notice that when we append list into list, whole object is added. But, when we use extend method, individual elements are added one by one. 